Welcome back to the Inbound REM YouTube channel. My name is Robert Newman. I am the founder of Inbound REM. Uh, most of you already know me. If you don't, I am uh, a 14-year veteran of the real estate marketing industry, and I've started a prop tech SEO company that makes websites and does SEO. I also uh, have a mission to educate realtors on how marketing impacts their business. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about something that I hear about all the time, maybe a new term to you. What is generational marketing drip? And how does it impact real estate agents or realtors in general? All right, so if you've never heard the term before, generational marketing drip is the idea that a younger generation that may not have a lot of income or equity impacts decisions from an older generation, specifically as it relates to real estate, and uh, helps like one generation impacts another. And usually when we've, when we talked about marketing, if you grew up in the era that I grew up in, the idea that let's say a grandson might impact a grandparent's decision to buy a major asset, such as a $30 million home, it would be unheard of. No grandchild would ever really impact usually that big of a sale. But these days it's actually becoming, happening more and more frequently especially in the luxury space. So let me explain how this happens and what exactly it is. So generational marketing drip is the, is when a younger generation, actually, let me, I'm going to rewind for a second. The reason I'm telling this story, the way it became a subject for my YouTube channel is actually, I owe a little bit of credit to Tom Ferry and Austin Mills. And I was watching a, um, a podcast that Tom was doing and he had Austin Mills on it. Austin, made reference to a story of a grandson who had showed a TikTok to his grandparent. And that grandparent had gone out and made a $30 million purchase uh, of a new home based on this TikTok video. And that resonated with me a lot because I actually hear a surprisingly large number of those stories. And the idea is actually relatively logical, but I've also noticed that a lot of real estate agents call into me and haven't thought through the entire marketing proposition because they constantly are saying, is it, should I really be on TikTok? Should I really be on Instagram? Should I really have a Zillow profile? Does anybody really make decisions like to buy homes based on any of these things? The answer is, yeah, they make these decisions a lot, but understanding where and how these decisions are made might help you decide if you really need to be in on any of these channels, if you need to incorporate this into your marketing strategy. It is an almost, cons like I have this conversation almost every time I get on the phone and do a consultation. That's how often it comes up. And the reason that I think that real estate agents do not realize the relevancy of these channels is because they don't really understand what generational marketing drip is or why it's a thing. So let me explain it to you. So I'm going to use another analogy to tell this story. Uh, this is true. Uh, recently, unfortunately, in my family, my, my a matriarch passed, my grandmother passed, and she was uh, 94, 95 when she passed, so end of life. And she left the generational home in a trust that three of her sons managed, but most of our sons are in their 60s and 70s. My father was put in charge of the whole probate or trust. And as he was out looking for uh, a realtor to handle the probate sale, he obviously contacted me because I'm in the real estate business, you know, parallel to it. But he also contacted our, my brother, who's 22 years my junior. And I don't, not even, I think he's 30-ish, maybe 29. And the thing is, is that my family is pretty consistently always talking to my brother, even though he's never bought a home, he probably won't buy a home for 20 or 30 years, like the way that, you know, how much student debt he has and such, but he still got called. And the reason was simple. My dad realized he understood that there a lot could be done with technology, like a lot of vetting of a real estate agent. You can find out most of the information that you know, that you would want to find out on a real estate, about a real estate agent. But here's the thing. My dad doesn't really know where you go look. He doesn't know how to do that himself. He knows that I know. He knows that Rafe knows. And between the two of us, 
he actually had a lot more confidence, I think, in my brother than maybe he had in me because my brother only speaks the language of digital. That's all he's been raised up on. Since he's been 15 years old, he's had a cell phone in his hand, so he's always had access to the internet at all times, 24 seven. And all these tools that most realtors think of as a marketing thing. My brother thinks of it as a, you must have this thing. You must have an Instagram channel. He's had an Instagram channel, I think, since he was 10 years old. He probably looks on Zillow for his properties, but since he's never bought a home, I doubt he's familiar with Zillow. And TikTok, of course, he's on all the time, as is the assistant that I have sitting in the room filming this content. She's always walking over to me and trying to get me to show me TikToks. If I ever have a question about TikTok, do I go on to TikTok? No. <laughs> I ask other people who are on TikTok all the time. And therein is the idea behind generational marketing drip. There are many people who have been very, very successful at building a wide variety of businesses and a wide variety of careers. And they've done it all without Zillow, without Instagram, without TikTok. You've probably built your business without these channels. But, but you know instinctively that there are a lot of people saying a lot of valuable things on these channels. So when it comes time for you to do some research or make a decision, you might very well end up leveraging a conversation with your sons, your daughters, your grandsons, your, your nephews, your nieces, essentially the generation that's one or two steps below yours. And depending on, so you ask a question, where's the best place to go shop for a house? And then your, your assistant or whoever it is brings you a tablet or something that has Zillow on it and says, okay, what price range are you looking at? Type, 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 type. Here's your options. Generational marketing drip is when somebody has access to tools that you know are effective, but you don't know how to use the tool. And that's why you go to people who are of a different generation than you and ask the question, is it you intuitively or instinctively or perhaps through the influence of people around you, you understand that there are tools out there that are making, that are making other people make important life decisions, marketing decisions. And because you understand that relevance, you might give a lot more authority to somebody that you wouldn't normally do it. Uh, there's a wide variety of surprising decisions that the people who assist me in my business take control of. Everything from finances to taxes to making decisions about car repairs, many, 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 many things that I outsource mostly because of the convenience of having other, like they say, oh, just go on this website and do this thing, like uh, my pet food, right? Go on this website and enter in your order. I'm like, God damn it, I don't wanna learn another website. I've already got enough in my head. So I hand it off to an assistant. So generational marketing might be important for everybody, but for those of you who are mid-market and low-market, it's probably not gonna be as impactful as it is gonna be for people on the upper end, the top of the market. The people are at the top of the market are the ones most likely to outsource decisions to other people. They are, they are probably the people that are most likely to be leaning very heavily on a much younger generation to help them make decisions. The place that I've heard story after story after story of, of success through generational marketing drip is through luxury brokers, luxury agents, people that are selling in the top five to 10% of their marketplace. At that point, you're dealing with business owners and, and C-corp, you know, C-level executives and everybody in those categories always has a, a, like a lot of help with their personal life. Um, and when you find that, you will usually find a much younger generation very savvy with using all the tools because that's part of what they're getting hired for travel, booking, reservations, medical doctors, most of these things operating through apps and tools, so on and so forth, which you probably, if, you're, if you've got a lot that you're juggling, you don't have time to learn. So then your assistant is the person who's going out there and looking for a $30 million home that falls within a certain specification that you want. You'll make the final decision for sure, but who's doing the shopping? Somebody else. And that's why generational marketing drip is so incredibly important for you to understand. Now, here's the last bit of this video. I'm gonna give you a few explanations of 
like a further illustration of how this might work. First of all, everybody should have heard of Zillow. You don't have to advertise with Zillow to create a profile on prof Zillow profiles that are non ad revenue generating based. You can still get reviews stored here. And when somebody else is doing research and you say realtor in city name, oftentimes it's Zillow profiles that come up right, right beneath the Google search profile. So Zillow is a very relevant place to have a real estate profile that might help you get access to generational marketing drip. Instagram. Now Instagram is, wildly popular the age base started off being about probably 15 to 35 and now has moved up to maybe 30 to 50 is the average age range jade mills joyce ray the list goes on they're all on instagram instagram is a great place especially in the luxury space if you're trying to access the influencer market if you're trying to access those people that follow luxury brands instagram is an incredible place to go and an incredible place to be. So you should actually seriously consider Instagram. Now TikTok is a little more speculative. I don't know that many people making a ton of money off of TikTok, but I do know a ton of people that go to TikTok for entertainment, including my assistant and every single other younger person sub 30 that I know. They're constantly trying to show me TikToks and I am constantly saying, I don't wanna look at TikTok, thank you. But what they're usually showing me is, is entertainment, like fun stuff, sometimes educational stuff. And I'm watching people drift a little bit more towards educational on reels. And educational is like lawyers and doctors that say, ten quick tips if you're getting a traffic tip ticket. And here's my supposition about TikTok. To be on TikTok, you'd probably have a great opportunity if you wanted to talk about closing costs, about property taxes, about 1031 exchange, about probate. The list goes on and on. And here's the funny thing. I do not know of a single influencer yet doing that on TikTok. So in the real estate space, having tons of room to become an influencer and think that you might occasionally back into a real estate deal is extremely viable. I think that this is probably the best strategy for a younger agent newer into their career who's got some time on their hands and is interested in experimenting with building an, an audience around their real estate business. Instagram already has really big names on it. Um, Ryan Sirhan and the, uh, the Altmans and the list goes on. They're all already here. Josh Flagg, they're already doing a ton. Instagram is an established channel that's doing a lot for real estate, especially in the luxury spaces, especially in New York and California. To be here is a good idea, especially if you're a photographer. But if you're entering in a really super crowded space and you're in luxury, it's going to take you a while to break in. Zillow is widely under leveraged, which is why I'm pointing it out. It is extremely prevalent in Google search, and yet I do not see a lot of realtors focusing on it. So these are three ways to potentially access generational marketing drip. Hopefully you understand why. I uh, hope I've given you some new information to measure should you be on these platforms and what would the real reason for that be. Thank you for tuning in. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, tell me why.